Hello! Welcome to Jerry's Gardening Hour. Nah, fail. I'm just gonna make a documentary of my yard. So this video is gonna be my try at killing goosegrass. If you don't know what goosegrass is, I uh, just pulled the clump up. Right here. Pulled it from right there. I think I did it again. This is goosegrass. It's it's similar to crabgrass, but it's not quite the same. And it's very annoying. I don't have much crabgrass because I put pre-emergent down, but when you're supposed to, in early March, to prevent the crabgrass from forming. Well, I have a little bit here and there. But anyways, this stuff grows in early summer, starts to grow in early summer, really takes off in the summer because it it really thrives in crappy conditions, bad soil, which I don't have the best soil, but whatever. But it's very annoying because it grows in little clumps like this. And they're just like bat, bat, bat. And the only way to kill it is I could have put another layer of pre-emergent in like May, which would have prevented this stuff from growing, at least as bad as it is now. But I didn't because I didn't know about that until here recently. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Another round of pre-emergent for this stuff whatever regular weed killer doesn't kill this like the stuff that kills dandelions and clovers and weeds doesn't kill this stuff because it's, it's a grass so instead of killing off my entire yard like with roundup and replanting everything that no that's a lot of work so what I'm going to do this year is I have roundup which this kills everything this kills grass and that so you gotta be careful where you spread this stuff. But I'm going around and I'm gonna spray each individual cluster because they all grow like that, like a little cluster. So I'm, I'm spraying the center of them, trying not to spread to the grass. If the little grass gets killed, oh well. I'm replanting seed anyways. So I'm spraying all the little patches, like that right there. And I'm just gonna see how that works. Just instead of killing off the entire yard, I'm just going to kill spots, and then I'll just replant the spots that I kill. And which I'm going to be aerating and overseeding the entire yard here in a couple weeks, because it's late August right now, so it's prime grass planting season. So, we're going to see how that works, because I don't feel like killing off the entire yard. And it's too late to spread anything that's going to kill it. It's almost already done anyways. So, meh. That's goosegrass, this little little patch right here. So I could go around, I mean, I could pull it out manually like this, like I did it for that one back there, and I could just pull it out. <sighs> well, I'm not gonna do it because I don't have leverage. But yeah, I could could just pull out each individual one. So like there's, there's another one right there. There's a little patch. I mean, there's, they're just kind of all over the place. But that would take way too long. Like, here's a big cluster right here. See, so you can tell that's kind of how they grow right there. Just there, there's a center of it, and it just kind of, kind of branches out, and you can, you can kind of see they grow in little tufts. So, like, that's why that's one plant right there. It's one big one. See how much space is around it? All this dirt. It kills off the grass underneath it. <clears throat> See, and there's another big tuft. So it's really annoying. That's why I want to kill it all. Lulu's here to help. Right? Right, Lulu? Are you here to help? No, you just dig holes in the yard. You're no help. You're no help. Underneath the underneath the tree where it's nice and shady is not nearly as bad because it doesn't grow in shady spots very well. It's out here in the full sun that really gets ya. We're gonna spray it with Roundup and we'll go from there. Ooh, hello! It's been uh, three weeks since I sprayed the Roundup and all the on the goosegrass and stuff and the crabgrass. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a minute. I, I didn't want to wait this long, but. Some, some life happened in the last couple weeks, so I haven't had time to do it, but now I do. So, as you can see, 
all the uh, goosegrass patches that I, that I sprayed, most of them, are all dying or dead. And there's big dead spots back here. I don't know if you can see it all. So it, it looks kind of crappy right now, which was expected. I knew it was going to look like that. It's the only way to kill goosegrass, though. It's just next year, i got to try to keep on top of it. Like, once it starts forming, just go out there and pluck each individual patch that starts growing or just spraying with Roundup real quick. Don't let them get this bad. So anyways, so that after that, probably not today because it's supposed to rain, which, not, which we need because it'll. the next step is going to be aerating, which is uh, poking holes in the ground. If you've never seen an aerator, if you remember in middle school or in high school on the school property, the big tractor that went around with a little spiky wheel and it made a little look like dog turds on the ground, that's called aerating. That's good for the soil. It loosens compacted soil, which is bad for grass. Grass needs nice, fluffy, well aerated soil to grow and spread its roots. So when you aerate it, it pokes holes in the ground so it loosens up soil. So it helps the grass that's already in the yard get nutrients to the roots after you fertilize and whatnot. And then those holes that you poke is a good time to also overseed. You don't want to spread seed too heavily though, because then that's not good either. It's like you either underseed or you overseed. Both are bad. You need to be right in the middle. So for my yard, since most of it is good grass, it's just a light overseed. And those holes that I poke in the ground with the aerator, that grass seed will go in those holes. And then and then the little dirt that little they call them plugs. The plugs that it makes, the grass seed will also get on that. And then after it rains and it'll, it'll dissolve back into the ground. Well, then the grass start growing. So. So that's going to be the next step. Not going to get done today. It was supposed to rain. Plus, we want it to rain because it'll soften up the ground. And the ground's pretty soft right now, but it's. I just got off of work, so I don't really feel like getting the lawnmower and the aerator out. So, that's the next step, is aerating. So now I'm going to take you in a little bit closer with uh, the crappy sound, but that's what dead goose grass looks like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, right now it does not look good, but it will eventually look like that grass over there. Nice and pretty and green, which there's some dead spots up there too. So, all right. Okay, so now we're ready for aerating. Um, <clears throat> so this is my homeowner version of the aerator, but they're all, all the same thing. Just pokes holes in the ground, makes the little uh, little dog turd looking things. That's what it does. So, got the weight to weigh it down. This is plenty of weight. I have had more weight in there before and my lawnmower couldn't pull it. It started slipping on the transmission. So, I found this is a good balance. About one and a half, or I guess two and a half cinder blocks. So, that's, that's plenty of weight to, to push them into the ground. Plus, the ground's pretty soft. So, that makes it easier too. Before you start, you should call 1-800-DIG-SAFE or whatever the utility company that marks the utilities in the ground. I think it's 1-800-DIG-SAFE. Eh, you might double check that. But since I just had this fence put in uh, earlier this year, I already know where all my utilities are and I don't have any in the ground, so I'm good to go. But if you live in a newer neighborhood where all the, the power lines and the cable and the phone line, it's all underground, those you'll want to get marked out so you don't run over those because some of those aren't very deep and these will actually go deep enough to pierce it i used to work for a professional lawn care company ralph buddy um and i've seen it i've seen um people like get a little too close to the paint or they weren't marked and the the tines went through and actually cut a phone line or a cable line one of the lines that wasn't very deep i mean literally they just they run the lines and they lay the sod on top of it and that's it in the newer neighborhoods so that's not very safe at all. But like gas lines, water lines, those are like three feet deep. Depending on where you live, below frost zone, which is like about three feet deep. So I'm not worried about those. We're good to go, let's go. Here's the holes that were made with the aerator. Okay, so that pretty much do it for this yard work video. So I've already, so after I aerated, I've already overseeded, so that's done. 
now all there is left to do is to spread some fertilizer eventually and then watch it grow. So I'm not going to film that. So this video is pretty much over. Ugh. That bug just landed on my face. Ah, Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Or you're just looking at some guy that thinks he knows what he's doing. But whatever, you know. I just This is my, my take on yard work. I have done it before professionally. So there's many other steps he could have done that I didn't do. One of them is verticutting which is very effective. Way better than just aerating and overseeding. Verticutting is pretty much the way to go, but that's also a lot of work, and I don't really feel like doing a lot of work. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, it was fun making it. It's been three weeks in the making. I might do a video, I don't know, probably in a couple weeks, if, it, if this grass actually takes and starts growing. I'll just do a quick little video of the show, like, hey, it actually took, wow. That would be like a product placement for the grass seed that I use. Like, hey, after two years, it's still good. So, we'll find out. So, until next time. Bye.